Hey friends, welcome back to She's At It Again. My name's Tanya, and I'm about to get ready to cook something. It's, uh, it's almost nine o'clock in the morning. I just finished walking the dogs, and I'm gonna get ready for dinner right now. So part of this is cooking some meat ahead of time. I'm just gonna cook some ground beef, add some spices and things to it, but I want you to join me because tonight we're having nachos, and if you need something quick to make and you have some ground beef, just a few things, it really depends on what you like on your nachos, um, then take a look at this. This might give you some ideas. You can make a little bit or you can make a lot. Just know you're gonna have to have a lot of cheese for this. So get some, some of the best chips that you can find, the best tortilla chips that you can find or can afford or find in your areas in my case. And um, let's get ready to make some of the best nachos you've ever had. So go with me. All right, I'm just getting my spoon ready because I know eventually, of course, I'll have to stir this. I have my pan heating up. I just turned my burner on about uh, between medium and medium low heat. And this is our ground beef that we're using. This came in a three pack, so I just have one of them left on here. I usually try to use the end ones first and put the other ones in the freezer. Um, because the end ones don't have labels on it to tell you what it is, if I'm remembering correctly. So I'd rather just use something that doesn't have a label on it and put the one, obviously, with the information on it in the freezer in case I look at there and I look at that package and go, well, now what is that square of pink mess right there? So, so y'all know how I do this. I cut an X in the bottom of it with a sharp little knife. Kind of push it toward the center like that. I hope I'm getting a picture of that. And this looks kind of disgusting, but it just kind of gets it out of the package and into your pan. In other words, you're actually using product that you paid for. But it keeps it from getting all over my hands too. You can see when you're getting it off the wrapper All right, I think my pan's warmed up pretty good. Yep, it's sizzling. And it looks like I got most of that out of there. Okay, so a little bit of history. I am not, um, now why did I put that camera in front of that drawer? Good grief. Okay, sorry, gonna have to move this back. Um, and most of you seen it from the other cameras going, what is she talking about? I put my camera right in front of my spice drawer. That's not a good idea. Let me turn that light on. Okay. A um, little bit of history about me and nachos. And it, the story goes, there is no history because I was probably uh, 30 years old before I ever made nachos before. It's just not something my family grew up doing. Now we made chips and cheese dip and uh, the way my mother did it was put some Velveeta and some Rotel in a blender and I don't know what else she put in there and blended it up. So I was probably 15 years old before I figured out that people actually warm this stuff up in a pan. So we're not really, uh, we're not connoisseurs of snack foods if, if you just wanna know the truth. Again, I was raised in the country. We ate beans and cornbread and potatoes and fried chicken and stuff like that and nachos were that was not something on our radar that's what people in California ate if you ask me as a kid who eats nachos I'd be like um Hispanic people um I don't know people from California I just didn't know I just was totally unaware the things that you think everybody knows because you know is kind of comical when you get to talking to people about it they just think everybody knows whatever they know like I just assume everybody knows how to make cornbread, and some people don't even know what cornbread is, so it's just kind of funny. So, um, when I learned how to make nachos, it was basically just chips with some cheese on it and some jalapenos on it, and you throw it in the oven and cook it. And I do know people that put these in the microwave, please don't even get me going on that. Don't put stuff like this in the microwave, that's just, that's not a good idea. Um, but, later on I learned that you can take your leftover roast and make nachos. You can take your leftover grilled chicken and make nachos. You can take leftover 
really anything. I mean, if I have if I have beans left over, make a big pot of beans and cornbread, fried potatoes and things like that, and I have beans left over, chances are we're gonna have some nachos eventually and when it's a night when I don't have just a lot of time to get dinner ready. But um, why that clock always needs to strike as soon as I start talking is kind of funny. My timing is impeccable. Um, but yeah, I don't have a long history with nachos, but I figured out some of the things that work really well and some of the things that don't work really well on nachos. Let's just say I've made enough mistakes to make up for all you out there. So basically what I'm showing you at this point is just how I personally season my ground beef to put in the nachos. Now I probably, unless I'm just making a huge amount of nachos, I'm not going to use this whole pound of ground beef for one setting of nachos. If it's just me and my husband or me and my husband and a couple of friends, maybe use most of it. I'll probably save part of it to use um, for something else. Maybe make some flour tortillas and make some burritos later on or taco salad or something like that. But I just want you to see what I'm seasoning this with. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab my one teaspoon measure and I'm going to put almost a teaspoon of salt in there, but not quite. You can always add more, but you can't add less. So I'm going to add about that much if you can see that. Sorry for the glare and the light. I just don't have good lighting over here. I mean, I have good lighting to cook with, but I don't have good lighting for a camera. So I'm going to put that on there. And this ground beef is still pink. I'm just stirring it up and cooking it so it's not cooked yet. And here's kind of a, not really a secret ingredient, but this is one of my hacks, is I use dried organic minced onions in this. I could use fresh onions and that's fine, but you've got so much moisture coming out of meat, whether it's fat or just natural juices coming out of it, that I'd rather keep that flavor in there. So what this is gonna do is absorb the flavor into these onions, so you not only have onion flavor, but you have onion flavor and still retain the flavor of your meat. So I'm gonna put about a teaspoon of dried minced onions in there. And you can add more or less, just depending on your taste and what you like to taste in that. Another one is the dried minced garlic. This is organic minced garlic. But let me see if I can get this in the picture, good grief. I'm just having a rough time figuring out what I can see and what I can't. Okay, this is just dried minced organic garlic, and I'm not gonna put quite a teaspoon in there. I'll probably put like half a teaspoon, but we like garlic a lot. Again, it's gonna rehydrate that garlic and just retain the flavors of that meat. I'm gonna put at least a teaspoon of ground cumin in there. Maybe a little more. Cumin is one of those things I found out later on that people just really like it. Now there's some things I don't like it in. Somebody put it in potato salad one time and I kept thinking this is just not right. I feel like I'm eating a taco but there's potatoes in it so it was just weird. Okay and I'm going to go with um, not even quite half a teaspoon of dried oregano. Now to this you could also add uh, chili powder, chipotle powder, if you like the spice, uh, just in any number of things. You can put black powder or black pepper in it. I'm sorry, not black powder, black pepper in it. Uh, just about anything you want. But this is just basic seasonings that I use in this. But if you are accustomed to buying packaged taco seasoning, if you'll replace it with that simple ratio right there, just the dried minced onions, the dried minced garlic, salt, cumin, oregano, things like that, that just what I put in this, uh, you will replace your taco seasoning. I would say it will cost you pennies per each serving that you put on a 
pound of ground beef. So save yourself a little bit of money and I, I'll, I can almost guarantee you, not, not guarantee because I don't buy it myself, but I think I've looked at it before. I can almost guarantee you there are some preservatives in that package of taco seasoning, which is probably not what you intend to be using as food, but just because of the way things are packaged, that's what you're gonna get when you get prepackaged mixes like that. Now, like I said, this is uh, not early in the morning by any stretch of the imagination, but this is about mid-morning. So what I'm gonna do is cook this and then I'll let it come to room temperature, put it in the refrigerator, and then I'm gonna take you through the process of assembling the nachos later on when it's closer to dinner time, so you'll see exactly what we put on it. I have some black beans left over from making a Mexican chopped salad, which is what we're gonna have with the nachos tonight. So I'll put the black beans on there. I'm gonna shred up lots of cheddar cheese. Please, 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 for the love of all that's pure and holy, don't use pre-shredded cheese. It's just, it doesn't melt right. It has cellulose on it. It's just not, it's just not quite the product that, that would be a good idea to make nachos with. I can't even think of a good example of a time when it would be a great idea to use pre-shredded cheese, but I'm sure there's something out there, like an emergency, like if I'm on the moon and I forgot to bring food, except if somebody had a package of pre-shredded cheese, I might eat it then. But that's, that's probably my limit. And I don't think it's poisonous. Don't, don't, don't think I'm saying, oh, you're, you're going to be so sick if you eat pre-shredded cheese, but it's just... It's such a disservice to cheese. It's almost, it almost disrespects the cheese. It just has too much gunk on it. Okay, so our meat is almost losing all its pink color, which means it's just about done. And this is a really good consistency. Let me see how good of a shot I can get this in this camera. So it doesn't have big lumps in it. As long as you keep stirring this, then it's just gonna kind of fall apart. Now, if you like uh, the flavor of canned seasoned tomatoes, and I'm talking about like the, the Rotel type mix of tomatoes with the peppers and chilies in it, then that would be something great to put in this too. But if you'll notice, there's no, there's no puddle of fat at the bottom of this pan because if there is any fat in this meat, which there shouldn't be too much, this is, uh, this is 85% lean, 15% fat. So 15% fat in that, it's not an immense amount of fat, but there would still be some fat left in the bottom of this pan had I not put those dried minced onions and dried minced garlic in there because they're absorbing all that. And as long as this, or, this is organic meat, then the fat is not a potential hazard to you. It doesn't... Um, uh, what, from what I understand, when an animal, um, whatever they eat, if there's any toxins in what they eat, like something off the, the feed or something like that, the first place it's going to go is into the fat cells. So if you eat the fat, then you're eating the worst part of the meat. But if it's organically fed and if it's a good, uh, if it's a good meat, then the fat in this is not going to be something that's detrimental to your health. Okay, I think we have a pretty good product right here. Let's see if I can show you that. Okay, so that's our meat. That's what I wanted to show you this morning. And so when we come back, I'm turning my burner off. I'm just gonna let this cool down. When we come back, we're gonna assemble our nachos, put them in the oven, and you can see what the final product looks like.
we are back. We are ready to get our nachos going. I have my little oven turned on and it's just gonna be me and my husband eating dinner tonight so I can use a smaller pan and I can fit it in my little convection oven out in the sunroom so I don't even have to turn the oven on here and heat the kitchen up. So when I say find the best chips that you can possibly find, this is, this is my vote. These are late July and you can find them at most stores now. They're, they're becoming pretty popular, but these are fabulous. They're super thin. We're gonna put out a layer of tortilla chips. Not too many, because I have a big salad to eat with this too, so I don't wanna overdo it. Try to put them in much of a, as much of a single layer as you can just so when you pull out one with cheese and stuff on it, you get the whole thing. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, you may wanna put yours in a different order than this, but I'm gonna put my cheese on there first. I may put more cheese on the top, I don't know, but I know I want my cheese on there first because when it gets exposed to the heat, I want the heat to heat up the meat and beans and jalapeno slices before it starts melting the cheese. Sometimes if you put the cheese on last, then the cheese will be all melted, but then your beans and your meat and stuff are cold underneath. So I don't want that to be an insulating factor there for my beans and meat. I want it all to be hot and the cheese to be melty. Okay, here's our meat that we made earlier and it's been in the refrigerator. So I'm just gonna put some of it on there, not the whole thing, obviously. But just gonna put enough to spread around. always add onions and things like that to it, but we're just going to have the seasoned meat, the, bean, the black beans, some pickled jalapeno slices, and that should be plenty. Here's our black beans. If I got a slotted spoon, it'd probably do better, but this is okay. There is a gnat flying around this area. I don't like gnats anymore than I like slugs. Man, those things drive me nuts. In the summertime, they're especially bad, especially if they find bananas or peaches or anything in the kitchen there. Swarmers. I'm going to have to do a video on fruit fly traps because that's that's what they are, and fruit fly traps really do work. I'm just the queen of getting rid of bugs. I, I wish it would be that easy, though. Okay, let me rinse my hands. have our jalapeno slices and this is what they look like. I have a big jar in the pantry too that I picked up at Costco so I'll dig into those next but for right now we'll use the couple of jars that we have here, the smaller jars. We go through jalapenos pretty quick. Zoe, she's mad because her daddy came home and he's not paying attention to her. All right, I have another jar here because that's not quite enough jalapenos.
you'd have told me as a kid that I would be an adult that liked jalapenos, I'd have told you you were crazy because jalapeno, eating a jalapeno was like eating poison. That's what other people did and it didn't hurt them, but it would kill me if I ate it probably. So I just didn't realize how good they were. Okay, I'm gonna go put this in the oven and then I will set the camera up and make sure we video it and we take it out. But for right now, that's what it looks like in its unheated stage. So we'll be right back. Okay, our nachos are almost done. Actually, they are done because my oven just went off. Our cheese is melted, our meat and our beans on the top are hot, and we're fixing to eat. Thanks for watching, guys. We look forward to seeing you next time where we share something else with you. Thank you.